Um, so we are going to be performing capital extension first. Um, and with this, the patient is going to be in a prone position. Um, they're going to be with their head just beyond the edge of the table. So if you want to get into position here, awesome. All right, so you want to make sure you at least have a hand underneath to let the patient know that you're going to be supporting them. Um, and what they're going to do is look, have them look straight at the wall. Wonderful. Put a hand there to support, and you're going to push against the back of the head. One, two, three. Don't let me push you down. Good job. Okay. And that is capital extension. All right, this is going to be capital flexion. And for this, the patient is in supine. Um, and you're going to ask the patient to tuck their chin into their neck. All right. You're going to place your hand underneath their chin and you're going to pull straight up and ask them to resist you. One, two, three, don't let me pull you up. Okay. This is going to be cervical flexion. On this, the patient is supine and you're going to ask them to lift their forehead straight up to the ceiling. You're going to place a hand underneath the back of their head for support and push down on the forehead and ask them to resist you. On the count of three, don't let me push you down. One, two, three. All right, good. Uh, this is cervical extension. Um, the patient is in prone, and you're going to have them uh, bring the back of their head straight up to the ceiling. Wonderful. You place a supportive hand underneath the forehead, and you push down with, on the back of the head, and ask them to resist you on the count of three. Don't let me push you down. One, two, three. Good. This is cervical rotation. Um, first, you would want to ask the patient to turn their head to either side. If they can do that, they are at least a three. Uh, to test one side, you would have them turn into that position and want to place your hands on either side around the temporal area and you're going to try and pull them out of this position. So they have to resist your pressure to pull them out. On count of three, hold this position, don't let me pull you out. One, two, three. Good job. Um, there is a two for this. So you would have the patient sit up if they're unable to turn their head from side to side. This is gravity eliminated, and you just ask the patient to turn their head from side to side. You could add a little bit of resistance. And that would be a two plus. Okay, so this one's trunk extension. So you're gonna ask your patient to go to the edge of the table, and you're gonna actually get up on the table. And hold their ankles down so that they do not fall. So, put your hands on your chest for me. Okay, so you're going to come up to a tabletop, even with the tabletop is a three. If you come up a little bit farther, that's a four. And if she can hold this, that's a five. Okay, so this one is trunk flexion. So, you're going to start with a three. So, we're going to see if our patient can um, bring her arms out like this and come back up into a flex position. Good. And then we want to make sure that she clears the inferior angle of the scap. So that's a three. She would do this for a four. Same thing. Come back up. Good. That would be a four. And then hands behind the head. That's a five. So clear the angle. Good. So now we're going to check the external obliques and the internal obliques. So you're going to ask your patient to take her um, right arm to her left leg to come up like that. Perfect. Clear the inferior angle. And that would be a three. In that position, she's working her right externals and her left internals. Um, so for a four, she's going to put her hands across her chest and do the same thing. Come up. Perfect. And then a five would be by the head. Just like that. Good. All right. So we're going to test the quadratus longorum. So you want to see if the patient can do that action, that motion. So you're going to have them elevate their pelvis on the one side or hip height on the one side. So can you bring your hip up? You can do that. So that is going to be a three at least. Now to test it, you're going to have them lay on the table, either supine or prone. So you can either lay on your back or on your stomach. Thank you. All right, again, now I'm going to have you do that action where you bring your hip up then to, on the one side towards your shoulder, right? There you go, hold that for me and you can hold on to the table. I'm going to try to pull him out of that by holding um, around his ankle and pulling straight down. So don't let me break you. Very nice.
So we're going to check your shoulder flexion. Can you do this? And you can. So she's at least a three. And then I have her hold her arm 90 degrees. And then I push down. And since she did move, she would be a five. If she was unable to do full range of motion, I would have her lay on her side for a two. I would just hold the weight of her arm and let her move it. And if she did that, I would add a little bit of resistance. And if she could continue to do that, she would be a two plus. So for serratus anterior, I would have my patient see if they could punch my hand. And since she could, I would hold here. Can you pull your arm a little bit? And then I would try to resist. And since she didn't move, she'd be a five. So for a two, I'd have her punch it across the table. Yay. Okay, so for collective traps, I would have her shrug up. And since she can, I'd have her push a little bit, like halfway. And then I'd push against her. And she doesn't move, so she'd be a five. So to isolate the traps, I would stabilize the opposite shoulder and then resist at the distal humerus and resist and that would be a five. And then for middle, I would stabilize the same place and resist the same place, and her arm would be out to the side. And then this would be for her lower traps. Okay, to check for shoulder extension, I'd have my patient see if they could bring their arm up, and they can. So I'd have her bring it halfway, and I would apply uh, stabilization on the opposite side and resistance of the distal humerus and push, and that's a five. So for a two, I would hold the weight of her arm and see if she can move it backwards. And she can, so it's a two. And I would try to add a little bit of resistance because she did that without any problem. And she still could do that pretty well, so it's a two plus. <laughs> so for posterior delt, I would see if she could bring her shoulder up, this arm, um, and then at 90. And since she can, that's at least a three. Stabilize the same shoulder and resist the distal humerus, and that's a five. So then for a two, I would see if she could bring her arm back, and she can, and if I need it, I can add resistance to make it a two plus. For a reduction, I would see if my patient could do this, and she can, then I would stabilize opposite, and the distal humerus, and she can do that. If she was unable to do that, I would lay her down. For a two, I would have her do snow angels. For shoulder external rotation, I have my patient's shoulder at 90 degrees and see if they could do this first, which she can. So then I would stabilize the shoulder here and resist here, and that would be a five. And then for internal rotation, it's the same position. I would see if she could push inside, and she can. So then I would resist here and stabilize there, and those would be fives. And then for two, I would have her in the same position and just have her drop her arm and see if she could twist it in and out for external and internal rotation. To test the rhomboids, you have your patient laying prone on the table and you ask to see if they can put their hand behind their back like they're being handcuffed. And then can you take your uh, hand off your back? So that's at least a three. So from there, I would stabilize on the opposite shoulder and then pull out and down, and that's a five. So for pectoralis major, you have your patient see if they can like hug themselves, and then she can, so that would be at least a three. And then I would stabilize on the opposite shoulder and I would grab at her like uh, distal humerus and I would just pull. So that's a five. And then if she was unable to do full range of motion, I would have her uh, test grade two and pull her arm forward. Which... Okay, first for elbow flexion, we're gonna have three different muscles we're gonna test. We're gonna do biceps brachii, brachial radialis, and brachialis. They're all the same motions, but except for uh, different hand placements. So for the first one, it's biceps, see if she can do it, palm up. She can do it, so she's at least a three. I'm gonna stabilize at the elbow, resistance at the um, wrist, and then we're gonna push down, and she is a five. And then for brachial radialis, we're gonna have trick her muscle. She can do it, same thing. Press down, it's a five. And then palm down, it's gonna be the brachia, uh, brachialis. Same thing. She's good. Okay, so for two, we're going to do gravity eliminated. She's going to do the same motion across the table. Go ahead. Elbow extension um, for the triceps. Have your patient laying prone. See if she can kick back. There she goes. She's at least a three. Have her about there. I'm going to resist um, at the wrist and then stabilize at the elbow. Go ahead. Okay, so for uh, two, gravity eliminated. She's going to do the same motion across the table. For supination and pronation, you're going to have your patient sitting, short sitting. You're going to have their elbow bent to 90 degrees, and you're going to see if they can supinate. So you start pronated, and you try to open up. So they can, so they're at least a three. You're going to apply your stabilization at the side of the elbow. You're going to have them supinated to start, 
you're going to try to bring them into pronation. So you're going to grab just uh, proximal to the hand, so you're not crushing their fingers. You're going to grab them. I'm going to try to break out of the position. Don't only break you. And so she's at least a four or five. For pronation, you're going to have your patient sitting, short sitting again. You're going to have their elbow tucked to their side. You're going to see if they can go from supination to pronation. So supination to pronation. To apply resistance, you're going to stabilize at the elbow, make sure they're still tucked, have them pronated. You're going to grab their wrist, but not their hand, and try to move them into supination. So she's at least a four or five. For a two for pronation and supination, you're going to have your patient support their elbow, and you're going to have them pronate and supinate like their Princess Diane wave into a crowd. For wrist flexion extension, you're going to have your patient sitting with their arms supported on the table. You're going to perform wrist extension, so you're going to ask your patient to move their hands up. Excellent. So she's at least a three because she can fight gravity. For resistance, you're going to apply it immediately because you don't want to cross the extensor tendons, and you're going to apply it with your resistance uh, on the MCP of the hand. So she's at least a four or five. For flexion, you're going to turn their wrist over. You're going to ask your patient to bend their wrist forward, so she's at least a three. For this, you're going to apply your stabilization laterally so you don't cross the flexor tendons of the muscles, and you're going to have them go halfway and apply resistance at the MCP again, which is at least a four or five. For a two for wrist extension and flexion, you're going to have your patient sitting or just standing, and you're going to place your hand on the table, and you're going to ask them to floppy fish, so it's uh, gravity eliminated forward and backwards. So that's a two. For resistance, you can apply gentle resistance across and do the same. for the other way. <laughs>